Okay, so before we get into our deep dive, which is going to be completely awesome and retrospective today, did you know that for 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider? And if you have not made Patriot Mobile your provider yet, I totally encourage people to make the switch today. Right? Because how many, I mean, like, how often is that the case that you know that your monthly bill is going to a company that actually shares your values? And better than that, they actually use part of the money to support the causes that we all believe in. Mm -hmm. That's a huge deal. That's right. I mean, you can, exactly, you can get free activation with code chicks. And these people, Patriot Mobile, they, they send a message. I mean, this just having them as your provider sends a message that you support free speech, religious freedom, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, or military veterans, first responder. I mean, it's like this. It, I mean, why would you not do this if you're a conservative? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and your service is great. The, the yep. service is great. You know that you're supporting a company that aligns with you and your values. I don't like why would you not make the switch? It makes no sense to me why you wouldn't when you know your service is going to be just as good or better than what you currently have. Yep. Hello. Yep. Uh, go to patriotmobile.com slash chicks, or you can call them 972-PATRIOT is the number. You get free activation, as Daisy said, with offer code chicks. You can ask about their coverage guarantee. If you have concerns about coverage, you can just ask them that. It's patriotmobile.com slash chicks, code chicks, or call 972-PATRIOT. Make the switch today. Do it. Okay. Now it is time to get into this week's episode, this week's deep dive, which is going to be a little, I think it's going to be a little juicy. Yeah, right? I think it's going to be a little juicy. A lot of people don't know that we, because I mean, we have some newbies and a lot of people don't know that we've been doing this uh, political thing for gosh, almost 15 years now. We old. <laughs> and so <laughs> can you believe we started doing this when we were in our thirties? Like that our is madness. Right. It's crazy. It's like, so it would, yeah, like our, yeah, in our thirties, we were in our thirties. I mean, we I was were, on the very tail end. Like, I mean, it's very tail, end, tail end, but I mean, like still we were in our thirties. Like we were, yeah, we, we were, were there. Still chicks. We were still firm <laughs> and supple. <laughs> and like, we, I, hadn't read, the, we hadn't reached the hen stage yet. <laughs> no, we hadn't. Or the reading glasses stage. Mm. Like now I can't see you unless I have these on. And so <laughs> back then I had 20, 20 vision. I mean, I had firm Everything, <laughs> things were up and not down. I mean, it's everything was totally different back then. As was, I think, may, maybe like politics wasn't completely different, but we have seen things change over the past almost 15 years. So um, one of the things that got me thinking about this is the other day on our daily show, I just, you know, just spontaneously shared a story about the Foo Fighters because yeah. when we did our radio show in... Indianapolis for almost eight years, um, we used a Foo Fighter song as our, like our show Bumper song. Music. Our yeah, it was. It's not really our bump music. It was like our kickoff song. It was like our theme song. Theme, yeah, it was our yeah theme our song. theme song. It was our theme song. And it kind it was. I remember our executive producer. He was like, you know, what music do you like? And I remember I said, oh my god, Foo Fighters is my favorite band. And you said Robbie Williams is my favorite singer. And of course, we weren't going to use Robbie Williams because nobody knew who the hell he was. <laughs> And so he obviously chose a Foo Fighter song, which is Walk, that's a song Walk, as our um, theme music. And we, we used it for years. I mean, mm. I think we probably used it for what, like five or six years? It was a long At least. time. Yeah. Yeah. And then some asshat. <laughs> got you know wind of it or he, he heard it I guess he was a liberal dude who heard it and he just got irritated by the fact that two conservative radio hosts women dared to use the song at the beginning of their show and I guess you know he was somehow affiliated with the Foo Fighters and I don't think he was I think he just tweeted at their management he tweeted at their management and then their management was like, Mm-mm, you can't do this. And so we got a cease and desist from the Foo Fighters to stop using the song at the beginning of our show after using it for years. You know, and so many people over those, you know, the course of that with five or six years, however long we used it, were like, hey, what's that song? I really like that song. We had given probably a, a gajillion people <laughs> a, just, a, just a hat tip 
where we that well gave the Foo Fighters a hat tip for that song. So many people had never even heard of the Foo's, or they didn't know that the Foo's sang that song, or they loved that. They ended up loving that song because of us. Yeah, we gave and them it was so a tri- tribute to them, right? And I love them. I had been, my God, I've probably been to I don't know eight or nine. Foo Fighters concerts over the years. And I love them so much. So you have no idea how much that, well, you did. You knew how much it broke my heart. But people out there have no idea how much that broke my heart when we got that cease and desist. Because it's like your very favorite band you just love so much. You've been to their concerts. You bought the swag. You've like been invested. You've, I mean, you love them. And then you get a cease and desist from the band. And they're like, you can't use our song. You can't sit at our table. Like you can't. You just can't like our music kind of a thing. <laughs> I just was so heartbroken over that. I was so pissed. I wanted to burn all their stuff. I didn't because I'm a rock and roller. And I was like, you know what? You guys are freaking fascists. Like, how dare you You call yourselves rock and roll people and then tell two conservative moms that they can't rock and roll to your music. You jerks, Dave (laughs) Grohl. And so I was just so pissed about that. And that's what made me think, okay, looking back over retrospectively over the past almost 15 years, like some of the stuff that's happened to us that people just don't know about, you know, some of the neat little quirky stories and people that we've met and um, disappointments, surprises, favorites, non-favorites along the way. And I'm like, we should probably share some of those fun stories because we've just never shared or just, I, I don't think we've shared a lot of those stories. Like the Foo Fighters thing, I don't think we've ever really talked about very much you know in public so i thought that was kind of a quirky little story really pissed off with the foos if dave Grohl ever gets wind of this which he'll never listen to this podcast but (laughs) um he has no idea how much he broke my heart (laughs) and how much i think he's a fascist and like i never look at their music the same now yeah and i'll never go to another one of their concerts again and the very first concert i ever took my um our son to was the foos when he was 14 years old and that, like, he, they have no idea, like, how that changed my whole perspective of the Foo Fighters, of them, of music, of the music industry. Like, what jerks? Well, know? it's just so dumb when any musician does this, when they yeah. tell any political can anybody or any show, whatever, whoever they say, you can't use my song, even though you love it and you are using it to promote me, you can't use it because I disagree with you politically. That's right. just freaking lame. It's fascism. Lame. That's yeah, fascism. Dumb. You so jerk. Stupid. So that was, that was really irritating. So I started thinking to myself, like when we first went into radio, that first day we were on the radio, do you remember, um, our first day on the air was a Saturday because we had a Saturday show at first before we were on drive time. And we went on the air and that chick who screamed at us the first day. We'll never forget the, it. And it should yeah. be said that we had no intention starting our careers or even starting our website. We never would have dreamed in a million years that we would get a radio show. Radio right. was not in our background. It was nothing mm-hmm. we ever knew about. We were doing our first show terrified. We'd had like, what, two or three practice shows right. that uh-huh. were not even, you know, they were just with a producer. Mm-hmm. And then we were just going to be thrown into the wolves on a Saturday live show. So we right. were already super nervous. We were terrified. Yeah, we were pretty terrified. So we get on the air. And I remember... um you know, I was on one side, you're on the other. We had a board op. I think there's a board op in there. I'm pretty sure. Because we can't, we didn't run the board. Yeah, Craig was in there. That's right. Craig was in there. And God, God, Craig. I remember Craig. <laughs> remember we so made dear. him play blurred lines oh like my God, every he played single Saturday. Robin Thick all the time. <laughs> yeah, we were just ridiculous. The don't come music. after us, Robin Thick. Yeah, don't do it. So, um, <laughs> but yes, Craig was in there. And I remember talking about Obama. I was talking mm-hmm. about Obama. And I was talking about the fact that I thought it was odd that he called himself um, exclusively a black man because he is, in fact, biracial, which is true. Yeah, he's it's true. He's a biracial man. And I thought it was odd because the person who raised him was a white woman, which is also true. (laughs) There's nothing non-factual about that. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was odd because the, the his dad abandoned them, basically, or his dad wasn't around. The white woman, the white, his white mother raised him. And so, but I thought it was odd that he sort of just rejected the whiteness in him. And then he 
just took on the persona of a black man. And I'm like, well, that's weird because there are a lot of biracial kids out there who would have loved to have been able to say that's the first biracial president. You know what I mean? Mm. So I made that point. And man, that woman during the break, she came in, she busted in and I get, she's a, she's a black woman married to a white man. And she just let me have it, which is well, weird. She worked in our newsroom. She, like she was an actual employee of the same radio station. Uh-huh. Came in and started screaming at me, at us, because I had the audacity to say that because she was raising two boys um, who she considered to be black, I guess. Even though her husband is white. Right. So she was doing the same thing as Obama, and she was trying to make the point, terribly, by the way, that it was perfectly legitimate for, for Obama to do what he was doing. And she was right. like, see my... And she was holding up her family picture. Right. And we were like... So? So? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? I'm I, like, your kid. Why your are you boy, offended? This makes right. no I'm sense. Like, your boys are beautiful, but you're making a shit point. Because I, <laughs> like, I don't understand what... And literally just screaming. And we had, what, like three minutes to get on the air and get ourselves situated for like the second segment that we were doing in our lives <laughs> live. I mean, it was just it was so nerve wracking. That was the worst. So I read that was like our, our introduction into being on the radio and it was terrifying and like being thrown on in, basically being thrown into a hot fire. I just remember that day was, I thought, do we have to do this every day? Cause I don't know if I can handle this, like my blood pressure. And I, this is, I was, I did not know this was going to happen like every single day. I don't And we were not, we, I remember we took like a, a pay cut from both of our regular jobs just to do radio. We, we both took like a, a 50% cut in pay. And I thought, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I don't know <laughs> if I am. This is crazy. So yeah, that was our, um, our introduction into radio and it was crazy, but then it ended up being super fun. It and, did, and um, there was some karma there because ultimately she was fired, not for that reason, but just because she was kind of general. an awful person. Yeah, um, She got fired, and then the company that she went to work for, which was a liberal rag, ended up uh -huh. going out of business, so it all worked yeah. out in the end. It really did. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> Karma's a real bitch, yeah. So um, then we ended up doing radio for, you know, eight years, almost eight years, and it was super fun. Radio was awesome. I mean, you can't, I don't know, you can't even express how how much fun that job is. It was like working in a giant frat house where you get yeah. to like hang out with your best friends and then just do exactly what you love every single day. Um, but we had some really cool interviews and then we had some really terrible interviews. I, I would say like, who, who would you say would be your fav the, the favorite people like person or people that we interviewed? In, in radio specifically? Yeah. Well, just any in general over the past, like in the past, I mean, I guess podcasting too, if you want to use podcasting as a, okay. a medium too. Yeah, that makes it easier. Because I, you know, we talked to, like we had regular segments in radio with Dinesh D'Souza, with mm -hmm. Todd Starnes. Those were always fun. Yeah. Um, but when you look at, I, I feel like we've, we've, and actually we interviewed Megan Kelly back in our yep. radio days, which was, was uh, that was a really big deal. And I love doing big, that. That was a big get. Yeah. But I would say for favorites, like of all time, there are so many people that I have loved having us having on with us like Zuby one of my all-time favorites he was great. love having Zuby um I loved having Rick Grinnell I felt like that was such a good interview that we had really with him. Great. Rand Paul was Rand another Paul. one that oh I yeah loved. he was he was fantastic yeah I yeah. loved having him um I loved way back in the early days when we talked to Blair White yeah she was a phenomenal uh, she was great interview. Blair that was White awesome. was awesome Blair, Blair, yeah, she was great. She was really oh, great. Oh, and then remember when we did, um, we did, like, as soon as Brandon Strzok got released from prison, essentially, when he came on our show to tell us his story of, of that entire thing, like being raided and being arrested and all that yep. stuff, that was Riveting. such a powerful, powerful episode. Yep. I just, I, I Riveting. loved that. Yep. And, and then anytime we talk to Dave Rubin, I think it's it's really fun because he's yeah. just very like minded. And he is super fun, really super fun. I would say, and like back in the day in radio, two of the ones that stick out for me um, 
the, the very first one because it just has such a tie to my childhood and i and i usually don't get starstruck when we do because th- i'm just not really a big like oh my god it's a celebrity i'm like losing my mind oh my god i just don't get that way with people i just don't maybe i should but i just don't because i'm like whatever they put their pants on the same way that <laughs> everybody else does but dennis miller was a really big deal for me like when we talked to dennis miller i was like holy shit we're talking to dennis miller like and then that's we met so, him and he was lovely. Right. And- we met him in person and like we did, he like held her. I mean, I just, I was like kind of starstruck with him. And, and I think it's because, you know, I remember watching him when I was a kid and I just loved him and he's such a smart guy. And um, yeah, and he was, and I, and I think also because he was so dear to us, mm. like he treated us with, with such respect and he gave us a lot of time and um and so uh, I really, yeah, I really liked him a lot. Mm. Um, the Dirty Jobs guy. Oh, Mike Rowe. Yes, I love that. Remember when he sang his opera? Mm-hmm. God, Ma- I love that. Mike Rowe spent 45 minutes on the phone with us one day. And he would have spent longer. I mean, yeah. he was incredibly dear to us. He did not have to do that. And so it just shows you, like, you could tell people who have character you know, who are just decent human beings. And I think Dennis Miller is a decent human being. I think Mike Rowe is a decent human being. Um, so those two stick out to me mm-hmm. those, as being just like normal people who have become famous. Um, and thank God they stayed kind of normal. You know what I mean? Those are two people who stuck, stick out that we, we have had the just the absolute blessing to be able to talk to you. And then the third one that sticks out to me, which I thought was just a really cool person to be able to interview because she um, is historical is Juanita Broderick. Mm. Remember when we got to interview her and we got to ask her all sorts of questions. And that, that was cool because I remembered, you know, being right out of college and all that stuff happening and like her name getting thrown around and, um, it was just cool, like being an adult and being like, wow, I get to interview her. Like she's just a part of history and she's in history. You know, she'll she'll be a part of history that I'm sure my daughter will read about. And I'll be able to go. I interviewed her once, you know, like that's. Yeah. And she was also very dear to us. You know, well, and the and, sucky thing about some of those is that they're gone forever because the right? radio station doesn't archive those. And it just mm-hmm. makes me sick to my stomach that those interviews are just gone, just gone. They're, they're gone. Poof. Right. You're right. I hate they, that. I hate that too. They, and I hate that they don't archive. I know that just drives me crazy. And then the last one that I thought was really cool is we got to talk to Alveda King. Mm, yeah. I she mean, it's Alveda, it's Alveda freaking King, you know? You know? Like, <laughs> she's, it's Alveda King. You know, it's just so cool that we got to talk to her. I mean, how neat is that, right? Well, so I'm sure you're going to you're I'm sure you're going to ask about like the least favorite. But yes. before we do that, can we please talk about the magic that is Genucell? Yes, for we a can. Moment? We absolutely because can. After last night's debate, I got to tell you, I required Oh my god. The under eye stuff and I don't even usually require that. That's immediate, not my problem area. Um immediate effects I use every single day, but I put extra on this morning. <laughs> extra. <laughs> You, I mean, some days call for a little mm-hmm. extra. Mm-hmm. And what's fabulous about the immediate effects is that you feel the tingling uh, underneath your eye where you put it. You feel the tingling. It's like this cool feeling that you know it's instantly going to work to somehow just wake your eyes up and make everything brighter. It, it just is like a bomb product. And so, too, are all the other products that are included in their most popular package, like the crystals, the microdermabrasion. It's my favorite favorite yeah i know you love that stuff scrubby yep now i have been known to use it too hard like you don't want to rub that too hard because it will rip off your face it feels so good though abrasion off your face i know it's so good though Uh (laughs) yeah it's fantastic all of that is included uh at genucell.com slash chicks in the most popular package where first-time buyers if you've been on the fence about whether or not you want to try Genucell, it's a great time because you will save over 70% off of the most popular package at genucell.com slash chicks. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash chicks. Use code chicks. And don't forget, you're going to start seeing results day one. They have a compliments guarantee. If you don't start hearing from people that your skin looks amazing, 
you can send everything back and get a full refund. That's how much they believe in the product. That's how much we believe in it. Genucell.com slash chicks. chicks. Are you so talk big, least so favorite? biggest disappointment? So biggest least favorite and biggest disappointments in the industry. Let's talk about. Let's start. Let's start dishing the dirt now. This, <laughs> this is this is where it gets dirty. Well, um, here's here's the thing. I, instead of like picking my least favorite interviews, <laughs> actually, my top least favorite interview is Ron DeSantis because it never happened. So it that's never my happened. number one. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Yeah, because he he just has ignored us because totally just, ignored us. Yeah, totally ignored us. Um, but I will say tied for second place is every single person. And I wrote some of them down because I remembered them off my list and not because they were bad interviews because they were on, for the most part, delightful. Anybody that we've interviewed who hasn't had the common courtesy to simply retweet yes. uh, their appearance, you are on my shit list. That includes people like Sarah Sanders, right. uh, like Ainsley Earhart, like Shannon Bream like Riley Gaines, right, um, right. like Hung Cow, even. I mean, yeah. people that we have loved talking to who have just decided, well, we got your audience. You don't get to have any of ours. Right. That's shitty. And I don't yeah. like any of those people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, I totally get that because a lot that has been very disappointing to me. Like there's a there's some there's a trend, at least towards us in this industry where we are not as popular as some of these people. And so they feel like they can just come take our audience and move on. It's like sleeping with a girl that is, you know, that's not so popular. And they're just like, eh, I can just discard her and move on. Yeah, That's literally who we are in this industry. And that gets really freaking old. Mm -hmm. That I hate that too. That happens to us all the time. And all our audience time. all the time. And our audience is awesome. We have a fantastic audience and we have a really great following and we have a, we have big numbers, which is why they like our show, mm -hmm. but we're not daily wire. We're not Breitbart. We're not, you know, like turning point. We're not one of those big ones. And so they're like, well, we'll use their audience and then we don't have to retweet or do anything else with these girls yeah. because, you know, they're just whatever. They're just the chicks on the right. doesn't matter. And so that's how we're treated. Um, and that pisses me off. So it's like I always say, we're sort of like the Romeo and Michelle, man. We're the Romeo mm -hmm. and Michelle of the conservative industry. That gets a little, um, it, it does get a little old. Yeah. And it, it started, I don't know where, like, I don't, I don't know why that, that phenomenon started, but it, it kind of started like right around the time we wrote our book. Like when we wrote our book, we, we wrote that. It's a damn good book. And we didn't really get even a lot of the um, help, no offense against um, the people that we worked with even at MS, but we really didn't even get a lot of the um, the help that we thought we were going to get propping up that book and helping to promote it from the people um, that surrounded us at that time. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it was really I thought it would be a much bigger deal, especially because our radio station at the time owned the local Indianapolis Published. magazine, right. Indianapolis Monthly, and they were utterly uninterested. And I'm like, we work in your building. Right. Like, it's why crazy. would you not want to at least do a little profile on yeah. the fact that these two just like suburban, now rural, but like suburban rural moms right. who wrote a book and who had like this explosion of popularity. I feel like that's a people it's a story. interest. That's a human interest story. And yeah. they were just like, I'm sorry, you are. Yeah. And they'd be like, I'm sorry, we're going to go ahead and just put like cupcakes on our cover this month because <laughs> right. people are more interested in like the cupcake explosion in the city. Right. And we'd be like, what the hell? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's it was just a really weird. Um, it was a weird time for us because we just thought, mm. OK, I, it's and I think a lot of it had to do with one um, that they wanted to ignore conservatism because conservatives were, you know, oh my God, conservatives, nah. And two, we're conservative women, you know, and I don't think they just knew what to do with us, the conservative women thing. I think conservative women as a whole have always just been sort of pushed to the side. And so that, maybe that was part of it, but we were, we were surrounded by dudes. I think if it were dudes, they would have they would have elevated the dudes. I hate to pull the sexist card, but I mean, I think that was part of it. They just don't know what to do with conservative women that have um, opinions as evidenced by the two guys we've put in jail, <laughs> you know, cause we've put, we've put dudes in prison, you know, because, and that has not happened to our male counterparts. It didn't happen to our male counterparts 
on the radio, at least. No. They didn't have those issues. We had, you know, there was a local guy that we put in prison who stalked us. Well, and, and then, unfortunately, he didn't go to prison. He was arrested. But that's like, true. And, and we had a restraining order, but he was a mental health case. And so they just were like, here's all this medicine. Right. That's true. Bye. We had free to threaten people all you want. That's, that's a good point. We had restraining orders against him, um, which is a piece of paper. And so it just basically means like until he tries to kill you, you can't do anything. Right. So that was fun for us. And he was <laughs> local and he was like an ex-football player. That guy was huge. And, and so he had he a stalking was, history. Right. He stalked um, Monica Sellis. I mean, the guy was like, so we were in great company. <laughs> um, so there was that. And then the other guy was a guy that was in Texas. Mm. And they before had to, you were there. Before I was here. And so that was, you know, but he, he actually went to prison. We yeah, actually we, put him he in He went prison. for three years. Right. And, and so that's, this yeah. is the thing. So women, you know, it's different for women than it is for men, at least in this industry. And, you know, that's why we get a little bristly when people are like, I listen, I totally agree with everything you say, but I just don't want to like say it out loud. And it's like, I mean, we get it, but we totally get we've We put ourselves out there, too. And we've done it to the to the extent that people have, you know, stalked us and wanted to kill us. And so we understand. And we're not even that popular. So I can only imagine like the. I can only imagine the death threats that say like a, a Tommy Laren or a, you know, a Dana Lash or somebody well, like Dana that. Well, Dana had to move. Like she had right. to like move to a whole other house. I mean, people are insane. They're and insane. what we've learned, unfortunately, is that a lot of the insanity comes from the right. The it's not just liberals who mm-hmm. want to like kill you and, and who issue the right. death threats. It is conservatives who just get mad at you for whatever reason, whether you're right. not paying enough attention to them or mm-hmm. whatever. They are psycho. It's true. Yeah, Mock is right. It's not just the liberals. It's the conservatives who, God, they get pissed off. They get really, really mad. So that's it's another like thing that we... a whole breed of people. Yeah, that's a, a whole other thing that we've learned. Yeah. And then, you know, it, another thing is, I think one, one of the things, too, that I've, I've learned over the years, just kind of going back to interviews and stuff like that, is everybody thinks that Fox is the end-all, be-all. I just, I don't know. I think the, the two people that I really liked at Fox were... Um, Rachel, what's her last name? Rachel. Uh, Campos Duffy. Yes. I really liked her. She was darling. She, she was so sweet to us. Very, very nice to us. She's probably like the, she and Ainsley were probably the nicest to us. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Rachel would share our stuff if we ever interviewed her. I don't think anybody at Fox has ever, has anybody at Fox ever shared our stuff? Has anybody Brian at Fox Kilmeade. ever? Brian Kilmeade. Brian Kilmeade has been Kilmeade. very nice about sharing. Mm-hmm. That's true. Brian yeah. Kilmeade has. Yeah, you're right. He's probably been like the one person. And but he had us on his radio show. He did. Like when we were doing our book tour thing. And he was That's very, tr- very nice. That's right. Brian Kilmeade is a stand-up dude. That's right. Mm-hmm. But like, I, but Fox, it's so interesting. Everybody thinks Fox is sort of like the end-all be-all. But I don't, you know, I don't know if I, if I believe that anymore. Like it's over the past 15 years, we've seen it sort of become like the, you know, the, the holy grail, like everybody wants to get on Fox. And I don't think it's that anymore. I think that if, you know, if, if I were, um, I don't, I just, it's, it's not like you and I don't really care about that. It's like, we don't really care about, Oh my God, we have to be on Fox. I think maybe if you would have asked us that, you know, 12, 13 years ago, you would have been like, Oh, that's really cool to get on Fox. Now we're kind of like, no, nah, we just rather podcast things. Well, because it's a lot of work. I mean, all the makeup and like, it's just a, it's right. TV is exhausting. And I cannot, I am in awe of the people who do that as a full-time Every day. job day in. A, I, I could never, right. ever. Yeah. Oh my God. Especially like we did, we did um, a couple, well, we did a couple hits when we did our book tour and the CNN makeup people were awful. Yeah. God, terrible and Ann Coulter Ann Coulter was so oh, mean tell the story about Ann Coulter and then we can like well I mean she just you know she was on there was a, a guy who retired from radio his name was Greg Garrison and we were on his show as mm-hmm. part of his show like once a week and it was like his woman day of the week so he had all kinds of female guests on one day of the week and Ann Coulter was usually right before us and so um you know, she, he would always, he would always, she would definitely hear that we like existed in the world. Right. 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 Um, and so we happened to be at CNN at the same, on the same evening, we were both going to be interviewing with Don Lemon 
And we arrived into this teeny tiny itsy bitsy green room. I swear it was like a half bath. The size of my dining room table. Like it's so teeny. tiny. Literally a half bath. Yeah. And we walk in and she is sitting there along with another woman whose name I'll never remember, but like familiar, right? Like some mm-hmm. other TV sort of person. And they were sitting together on one couch and then there was a couch across the coffee table from them. Again, like we're knee to knee almost, Right. You would think when you open the door and then two people who are sitting there talking, clear it's a teeny room. When that right. door opens, you at least look up and sort and of acknowledge, just acknowledge right. the fact that two humans are entering the same mm-hmm. tiny room that you're in. It's the polite thing to do. They did not even break their conversation for a second. Like they did not acknowledge us in any way. So it was super weird and uncomfortable. It was awkward. We as sit hell. across the, the table from them and we're literally just staring at them. <laughs> like willing them to pay attention to us in well, there's some way. Else, there's nothing else you can do in that tiny little room. I mean, it's like it we couldn't help so it. It was so weird. And so yeah. at, at one point it became so weird that like you and I just started openly talking about how weird it was. Right. And they yeah. kept just talking louder to each other and ignoring We were just us. making, we were making fun of them <laughs> in real time. We were just like, we're basically saying bananas. to each other, this is so freaking weird. Like what in the <laughs> hell is going on? Like we're saying, we're basically saying that to each other. And that I was waiting ha- for Ashton Kusher. I was like, are right. we being punked? What like, is what happening? The hell? What's going on? Like we're saying that in real time to each other. And then we're like texting our husbands going, what the hell is going yeah. on? Like this is so odd. We're getting ready to go on with Don <laughs> Lemon. This is like, I don't, we're in a, like we're being punked. What is happening? It was the craziest yes. thing. Yes. And, and she, then she ends up, she was before us, right? And so like <laughs> we go, we're then in the makeup room and she's on with Don Lemon and um, we're in the makeup room. You went to the bathroom for a second. Yeah. yeah. And so I had I'm to get in the out makeup of there. room. I don't even think I peed. I just needed to get the hell out of that room. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm I'm waiting for our thing. You're in the bathroom and Ann Coulter's hit gets done. So she comes back in to get like makeup off. Mm-hmm. And finally, it was just she still didn't acknowledge me. But I finally said, hey, Greg Garrison, who's the guy that we were on the radio show with together. I said, Greg, uh, I'm, Greg says hi. And then all of a sudden she lights up and like sh- she recognizes that I Two, am a human being <laughs> and so and so she's like oh my god oh my god greg bleh. and then and then we had like sort of this civil conversation uh-huh. but i'll just never look at her the same way like i'll never i just was like you you are not all that like i am not just a speck of dirt on the floor you can recognize that you're amongst another human being right it was awful like that yeah. was just the craziest it's like thing. because you had to mention greg garrison's name for her to it's be the like only way. oh you're not an alien from planet gleeborg okay yeah, like we just, know somebody in common. Oh yeah, my gosh, so I, I guess so I better be nice now. I guess I need to say hi to you now so I don't look like a complete hag. Yeah, it was yeah. just it was just horrific. That was that a was hor- awful. That whole situation. And then the makeup people were terrible and just yeah. Everything that the book tour was very eye eye opening for us because you got to learn like who was awful in the in, I mean, CNN was awful. The Fox I mean, John Lamont was actually very nice to us. He he was then, but there's no way I'd want to go on his show now no. if he still had a show. Oh my God, he would be horrific because he changed yeah. over the years. But at that time, he was okay. And he, plus, he had a cold that night. I think his guard was down. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? It was just the whole thing. And the makeup people were just terrible to us. They were just terrible. Fox people, if you ever want to get makeup done professionally, go get your your makeup done by Fox people because yeah. they just make you look like a million bucks. Yeah, for real, they you really guys. do. And your hair. And they're nice. I mean, they, they're nice there. They're super nice people. Yeah. So there's that. There's an inside <laughs> scoop there. Anyway, so that's that's some scoop. I mean, I don't. That's, that's some scoop. That's some scoop. We could have like, like a whole other show about people that we are no longer on particularly good terms with. Yeah. Um, and you've probably mm-hmm. heard some of the names, or you've just recognized that by omission, we yeah. don't like to talk about them. And so mm-hmm. maybe someday. We'll do a show about those people. Yeah, Maybe. we could. Yeah, we'll think about doing that. Because, I mean, you could. Yeah, like you said, you can probably already tell just because we don't <laughs> talk about them. And they don't talk about us. So. Yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. Right. We'll probably get to the point, like when we're in about five years, we just give no Fs. And we'll just start. <laughs> we'll just start going like full Elmo, scorched earth. <laughs> yes. And we just won't care anymore. We'll just start naming yes. names. So, yeah. Anyways, you guys, that's it. Well, it's not completely it because we also need to remind people about the fabulous My folks pillow. at My Pillow. We do. We really I do. I mean the towels, you guys. The towels. And just and travel pillows. 
I you listen, I don't think listen, travel pillows do not get enough. They just they don't get enough like I guess people like fawning over them. <laughs> Because I buy travel pillows for everybody that I know. They're fantastic. And I throw everybody them in the wash. Everybody. Everyone. They're great Christmas presents. And you know how I put up my tree in September. So <laughs> you guys have got to start buying Christmas presents for people, whether it be the towels or the sheets or whatever, the pillows. But travel pillows are a really great Christmas gift for like that person you don't know what to buy for that person. Travel pillows are great. Yeah. And they have little covers that are so cute. I have the leopard one. So cute. They like are. You, they're they're uh-huh. phenomenal. Uh, right now, 50% off of their six-piece towel set, which is, that's my favorite my pillow product that exists. Their towels are just like nobody else's. And you can get that uh, 50% off deal if you go to MyPillow.com slash chicks and use code chicks. Uh, it's, the six-piece set is only $39.99 right now. Normally, it's double that. So you're going to get that amazing offer. You're also going to get huge discounts on all their other MyPillow products. Again, MyPillow.com slash chicks. Use Code chicks, mypillow.com slash chicks. Until next week, you guys have a fabulous week.